It's called Isra and Mi'raj. And we chose this time, Ms. Afifa and I chose this time specifically because we are in the month of, in the Islamic calendar, we are in the month of Rajab. You see number seven? Number, all of these are the, uh, the Islamic calendar month, okay? Muharram, Safar, Rabi' al-Awwal, Rabi' al-Thani, Jumad al-Ula, Jumad al-Akhir, Rajab, we are in Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, Shawwal, Dhul Qada, and Dhul Hijjah. There is in the whole calendar, there is four months, guys. The one that I highlighted in green, Muharram, Dhul Rajab, Dhul Qada, and Dhul Hijjah. These are special months, and we are in one of them, Rajab. And on the 27th of Rajab, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, um, was in Mecca, at that time, he did not migrate it yet, guys. So I want you to think about this incident happened before he went to Medina, okay? This incident happened when he was still in Mecca before traveled or migrated to Medina. But let's talk, before we start the, about the story, let's talk about what was happening at that time, okay? Uh, Ms. Afifa and I chose this picture for you guys because it reminds us of the time that Prophet Muhammad wasallam in Mecca. During that time, he was, um, he was very sad. This year, before uh, this year when this incident happened, he was really sad because of so many things happened during that year. It was crazy. number one, his wife, his wife, uh, Khadija, if you all remember her name, uh, passed away. And his uncle also, the one who raised him, if you remember his name was Abu Talib, also yeah. passed away. And it was called the year of sorrow. It was called the year of sorrow. Bil Inglisi, Bil Arabi was called Am al Hizn. He, got he really was sad. really sad. And not only because of these two people who was very dear to him passed away, but also the people in Mecca. Uh, who did not believe in him, they were really, really uh, um, uh, uh, acting uh, too bad to the, the, to the uh, believers at that time, to the Muslims at that time. So one day he went to the Ta'if, it's a small town next to Mecca, and they did not even give him the permission to talk to the people, and instead, they gathered all the little kids and they were holding uh, stones and they were throwing stones at the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to the point that he was bleeding. Okay, let's agree, guys. I'm going to mention Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi a lot. So every time I mention him, I want you to say in your heart, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? Let's agree to that. Now, because of all these things happening, he was really sad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to uh, cheer up Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wanted to do something with him that he, it never happened before. Never, ever. And it will not happen to anyone except on uh, after, after life, inshallah. He wanted to meet and talk personally to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But how? How? This is the amazing story of how did it happen. So one day, as he was leaning against the Kaaba, okay, as you see, this is an old picture of the Kaaba. And it was Rajab time. Again, it was Rajab, the same month as we are right now. And they say, it's on the 27th of Rajab, where he was leaning against the Kaaba at night. 
it was night time and Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and he said uh, but he said this he saw with him something that he never saw before and he said this time I'm not coming just to deliver the message or an ayat from the Quran this time I came here and he brought with him an animal he did not, Rasulullah just described it for us. He didn't say the name of the animal. He just said, it's a burak. Okay, he called it a burak. And he said, it is not a horse. It is not a donkey. It, it, is, it is kind of a horse that has wings. That's what he, the way he described it. And, um, and he told Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to ride on it. So the special thing about this uh, animal that like for us guys, how do we make a step? Maximum you can, you know, you can make a huge step, but it's not that, that big. This animal, his footstep is um, across the furthest point that he can see. This is how fast he can go. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went on the on this burak on this uh, animal, and then they flew, they flew away, with a blink of an eye, guys. He went from Mecca. You see the um, the map on the right side, guys, or on the left side? Okay, Ms. Afifa is pointing on the left. You see that the, the uh, Mecca. The picture of Mecca. This is where Mecca is. The, this map is Saudi Arabia. This is all Saudi Arabia. Okay, guys. This is the Red Sea on the left. And, and there is a sea, also the Arab Sea on the bottom. Okay. And this is Mecca, the small point where the picture of the Kaaba, this is where Mecca is. So he traveled on that horse from Mecca to Al-Quds. The second picture on the right, guys, you see it. This is called, is the incident called Isra and Ma'raj. So Isra is from Mecca to Jerusalem. That's Isra, which is traveling at night. This is what it means. And then uh, uh, Ma'raj is going from Al-Quds to heavens to meet and uh, talk to and speak and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we are at the point that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam riding on the Buraq with Jibreel alayhi salam and traveling from Mecca to Jerusalem. And remember guys, back then there was no transportation. The only transportation they have is riding camel and horses. And usually it takes them uh, one month, one month to go from Mecca to Jerusalem. One whole month. Okay. And so this I want one night, right? They, they did not only the Isra in one night, the whole thing. He went, he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He saw all the prophets we're going to see, inshallah, and came back in one night. Okay? The whole thing happened in one night. Now, um, I want you, as you are you're reading from the Quran, most of you, mashallah, I want you to know that there is a surah in the Quran called Isra. Surah Al-Isra. And the first ayah talks about the Isra, which is going from uh, Mecca to Medina. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhana ladhi asra. Listen, guys. Asra comes from Isra. Bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-harami. إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير. 
So again, Allah is saying in this ayah that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem on the Isra, riding on uh, sacred masjid of the farthest masjid. That's why we call it Aqsa, because it's far away. And it's the Masjid Al-Aqsa is so special, guys. It's not any masjid, okay? Uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, the three holiest masajid in Islam, Masjid Al-Kaaba, Al-Haram, where there is a Kaaba, Masjid Al-Nabawi, where his house used to be in Medina, and Masjid Al-Aqsa, this one, in Jerusalem. Okay. Now, let's go to the next slide, Ms. Hadid. This is a picture of the Masjid Al-Aqsa, guys. It was built long, long, long time ago. It's very beautiful, old and beautiful masjid. It's a huge. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now landed in here, in the Masjid Al-Aqsa. They put the buraq on the side and they entered the masjid. Inside the masjid, guess who he saw? He saw most of the prophets. And he prayed as an imam. He saw Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Musa, Prophet. A lot of prophets were lining up welcoming Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want you to remember how he's feeling right now. Remember at the beginning, he was uh, sad, and it was the year of sorrow, as Sumaya uh, reminded us. And he lost, uh, you know, two of his the most uh, beloved uh, people. Uh, but then, think about how he's feeling now. He traveled with Jibril, uh, alayhi salam, and then he met all his brothers in prophecy in Jerusalem, and he prayed as an imam there. So I think he's feeling after so after he's done after they're done praying. There is if you ever visited, inshallah, one day in Masjid Al Aqsa, you will see there is two sites. Okay, each site on one side. The one side would be the Masjid Al-Aqsa, okay? This one, the one we see. The other side would be uh, this one here. It's in the same place close to it. You can go walking from one to the other. But underneath here, there is a rock. You see that picture of a rock, guys? This one? This one where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi stood up on here and went from Jerusalem to the heavens for the Mi'raj. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here, Ms. Afifa. Time is running really quickly. We're about to go um, to our classes. I'm sure they have classes. I have a class. Yes. Um, yes. I want you guys to um, think about uh, what we have talked about. Uh, the way that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he was and where did he end up in one night? What was he riding? Why do you think Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose this time before even going to, uh, to uh, migrate to Medina? Uh, and, and why? Why do you think he did that? He's going to give him a present. But he did not give him that present uh, when he was in Mecca. He chose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to invite Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have this connection. Okay, I'm going to emphasize on the word connection to give him that present. And then we'll see, inshallah, next time we uh, when we complete the story we'll see what was that connection and what was that present inshallah inshallah thank you mr inshallah. you're welcome we'll go and, over uh,